Hey everybody, welcome back to Idiot Proof Cooking. So the other day I was browsing through TikTok and I saw somebody making a tomato soup cake, which like completely blew me away, like it sounds absolutely crazy. But then I realized I bought a cookbook at a uh, yard sale over the summer, this guy right here, and wouldn't you know it, that same recipe is in this. So I just had to try and make it. So that's what I'm making today, tomato soup cake. It actually is amazing, it tasted really, really damn good. So check out the video and definitely try making it, and let's get into it. All right, so let's do some baking, shall we? Now, I've got to admit, I'm still thrown off by this one. Tomato soup cake, just, it sounds so bizarre, but you know what, let's make it and see how it turns out. So into a large mixing bowl, add in two cups of all-purpose flour. From there, add in four teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, add that in as well. Next in is one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a teaspoon and a half of ground allspice, and then a half teaspoon of ground cloves. Pour all those in, and from there go get out your trusty whisk, and whisk all of these together until they're nice and combined. Once they are combined, we're going to set that aside for a moment and get ourselves another mixing bowl. And into it, we're going to add one and a third cups of white granulated sugar. Next in is two large eggs, so crack both of them in and then get your trusty whisk again. Break the yolks and mix the eggs together with the sugar until it's all combined. Should look something like that. Once the eggs and sugar are mixed, get yourself a half cup of lard. Now you can use shortening if you want. The recipe technically uses shortening, but I prefer to use lard and I use it over shortening all the time. Regardless, you need to melt it, so either melt your lard or your shortening, and then pour it in with the eggs and sugar. Next in is a quarter cup of just regular old water. Pour that in and give this a whisking together. And then we're going to add in one can of Campbell's tomato soup. My God, we're making tomato soup cake. So pour all of the contents of the can in with your wet ingredients and whisk this all together until it's combined. As you can see, it's pretty orange in color. That's definitely from the tomato soup. But yeah, there we go. We've got the wet ingredients dealt with. So bring back the dry ingredients and then it's pretty straightforward. Pour the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients and then you're going to start mixing it together with either a spatula, a wooden spoon, basically, you know, whatever you want to use to mix it. Just make sure you mix it until it is thoroughly combined, no dry flour left over and then once it is all mixed together go get yourself an 8 inch loaf pan like the one I have here and you're going to give it a quick spray down with some cooking spray just make sure to coat the bottom and all the walls of it from there you're going to get your cake batter and just pour it into said loaf pan pretty straightforward at this point in time get your spatula again just smooth out the cake batter until it's nice and smooth on the top and then preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and bake this for anywhere from 40 to 50 minutes depending on the efficiency of your oven until it comes out nice and risen and golden brown looking like this now there we go there's a tomato soup cake now in order to tell that it's done get yourself a wooden skewer or a toothpick inserted into the cake and if it comes out clean you know it's cooked all the way through so now we're going to let this cool down for about two hours because we're going to frost it but we need it to cool down one so that we can handle the cake properly and two if it's still hot the frosting won't set so after two hours you can clearly see it's cooled down because I can handle it without burning my hands off and there we go there's a tomato soup cake that looks like a tomato soup cake I guess I don't really have a frame of reference otherwise but let's set this aside for a moment and make the cream cheese frosting for this so get out a large mixing bowl and into it add two cups of powdered sugar a quarter cup of melted unsalted butter next in is eight ounces of softened cream cheese I let mine sit out for about 30 40 minutes to warm up to room temperature so pour that into the bowl and then you're going to add in a teaspoon or so of vanilla paste or vanilla extract and then you're just going to mix it all together I would suggest using an electric mixer like I have here it obviously makes mixing it much easier so mix that all together until it's good and combined now I'm going to give Rose these two beaters because the cream cheese frosting is delicious and she absolutely loves them there you go, Rose, you get both this time. 
but there we got some cream cheese frosting so let's bring back the cake and start frosting this up now i'm going to just absolutely cover this in cream cheese frosting you can be sparing if you want i don't really think you should i think the more cream cheese frosting the better really like is it going to make the cake taste worse no absolutely not so load it up with cream cheese frosting and there we go look at that that is a tomato soup cake i that's honestly when i started this channel it's not something i thought i would be saying <laughs> but let's cut into it and let's give you a shot of the interior you know what it really it looks like spice cake it's got like an orange tint to it it, it looks normal and it smells pretty good you know what so i think it's time to go in for a taste test and i'll tell you how it tastes and you know what <laughs> yeah with the first bite wow that was it was really good it was really good it didn't taste like tomato soup i mean that is surprising it it was like spicy and sweet and it had a bit of tang and rose loved it too meg loved it it was it was shockingly good i could not honestly say that i would have thought tomato soup would make a good cake but this was this was really good it was super easy to make and if you make this for guests there's no way they're going to guess that there's tomato soup in this it was really just absolutely delicious but anyways, that is the end of the episode, like always. I hope you liked what you saw here today. If you did, why don't you drop me a comment, like the video, or even subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching 8 Proof Cooking. We'll see you again soon.